Nej, nej. It's just a funky night. I mean, I don't know how you guys are doing, but I'm having a little leftover funky from the weekend. I am, I am reminded of something, something my mentor many years ago said to me. Long before this, some people know me from way back when and know that I was a commercial artist before I was, well, this particular train wreck. Thank you. Thank you both, all three of you. Before all of this, I was, I was a commercial artist, and my mentor said to me, he says, do you know what the definition, Jay, do you know what the definition of a professional is? Well, that's one. <laughs> I think we've about covered it. Good night, everyone. No. The, you know, most people will tell you the definition of professional is you fooled someone into paying you for that, which is a pretty, pretty schwank job if you can manage it. We're still working on it. But the, the specific definition that my, my mentor gave me that I thought was so brilliant, he said to me, he said, if you can fix your own screw-ups so well that no one, know you, no one knows that you made them, you're a pro. And I thought to myself, that's freaking genius because <laughs> I've got news. Failure is a big part of my process, but he was basically saying I'm free of all of that if the end goal looks good. I think I can work with that. I think you can work with it. I think anybody can work under those terms. I think we can get up and do stupid, stupid things under those rules. Well, I had an experience that proved I have at long last gone pro, which means I'm going to tell you about my first epic major on-site gig screw up. It gets better. It wasn't just a screw up. It was a screw up that would be remembered at a five-year-old's circus themed birthday party. We're better to be remembered forever by, than by scarring the hell out of a child, right? So what a great plan. First of all, L, happy birthday. Please turn off YouTube. We cannot afford your therapy. Okay, now I'll come back to it. So here's the deal. They had me be a stilt-walking ringmaster for the circus, greeting little kids, which, by the way, scares the hell out of them. <laughs> but that's not actually the part of the story that's relevant. That's the secondary screw up, which I'll tell you how I fixed in a minute. But the first screw up was, okay, it, you know, it was Saturday and it was gonna rain. At some point it was coming down. We didn't know if it was Saturday or Sunday, but we were gonna end up really wet. Still walkers have a kryptonite and that is wet ground. If there is wet ground, we are going to die. Let me hear it from the still walkers. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I know about that one. Um, so I had to pack a second costume, which meant repacking all of my gear and packing a second costume, a ground clowning costume in case this screwed up, figuring no problem, if it goes wrong, it'll come down because I'm there to be a professional. There would be a screw up and I would fix it by clowning. Perfect plan, load up. Amanda Hood's my roustabout for the day. She comes, gets me, we load everything in the car, bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket after still after this, after that, after a water bottle, and we hit the road with plenty of time to spare. Everything's great, three quarters of the way through. and go, man, I can't wait to unzip my hanging bag. I am now 45 minutes into a one hour road trip and I don't have any costumes. I could turn around and be half an hour late for the birthday party and there's no one greeting the kids which was the whole point of me being there. Oh crap, I have done, screwed it up. So I pull out my phone and I dial the dojo, the secret dojo of the circus freaks. And I say, I forgot mine and I'm told the following words, text me an address and the phone hangs up. Well, all righty then. <laughs> now realize, I'm 45 minutes into a road trip where I'm going to screw up a little kid's life. I'm a little stressed, so I'm running on faith. I'm figuring, what the hell? It's not like I can make it any better. So I text the address, I get there, I load all my gear in, I, well, you pee before you get up on stilts, but I really wasn't originally gonna tell you that part, so I pee and I put on my spandex, I really wasn't gonna tell you that part. And I put on my big clunky shoes, which I would tell you that part. I put on my knee pads, put on everything else, and I go to reach for the hanging bag, which has arrived on time. I would like to thank Marie Martin for driving like a bat out of hell. And I would like... And I would also like to acknowledge the Dallas Police Department for being lenient towards birthday clowns. 15 minutes later, I was in full costume in front of a birthday party where I began to scare the hell out of children as anticipated. 
To answer the final question, how did I not manage to scar them for life? As I was walking in the door, I'm going, how are you, everybody? And they go, ah, mommy! Ah! <laughs> well, later on in the day, they had a train. This beautiful, amazing, full-size kids get in it and they drive them around the block train with Tim the engineer. And they were looking at me and I'm guiding them to my friend, Tim the engineer. And they're kind of like, okay, well, you brought a train. You can't be all bad. And then they get in the train and they realize they're going to totally outrun me. So at this point, they start making fun of me. You and your silly beard and your, your big long legs and you're weird, they say. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Amanda, hold my staff. I had a staff because I was a ringmaster and ringmasters, basically their job is to smile and point at things, which probably is what really terrified the children because I walked up and said, hello, and they went, <gasps> It's kind of how it went. So the train pulls out. And what they don't know, and I don't know how much you know about stilts. Newcomers, do you know anything about stilts? They're tall. They're tall. But there are three types of stilts you should know about. There are drywall stilts, which make you stand around and smile and wave at people. There's peg stilts, like Marie Martin has, and she dances like a ballerina, nine feet up. And then there's the stilts I rock, which are running and jumping stilts, which allow me to run faster than a locomotive. Yeah. If you ever want to know how to become the coolest guy in a, in a circus-themed five-year-old's birthday party, just run faster than their train. The simple moral, obviously, is that the reason any of that happened was mad amounts of support from, from Amanda, from the party itself, from Marie Martin, obviously, who ran her butt off to bring me costumes right before it rained, and everything going right was entirely based on having people helping me be great for a minute and then waiting for that moment to be great. This place is where we take all that stuff we use out in the world, we turn it towards this stage and we let our performers be absolutely awesome. And I want to thank you for being a part of that support.